You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. Hey there, welcome to episode 204 of the Soul Forge podcast. Welcome to the Soul Forge, a place of silent mystery, quiet contemplation, and outright mayhem. Join your host, Sean Vanderloo, as he guides you through the adventures of living. Together, we'll talk about life and love, sex and dating, joy and heartache, memories and loss, and so much more. Don't worry, it's not nearly as pretentious as it sounds. Get ready for life, the universe, and everything on The Soul Forge. Hey everybody, welcome back to another special episode of the show. If you're new here, welcome to it. And if you're a returning guest, well, I'm glad to see you back here in the Soul Forge headquarters listening to another fun and exciting episode, which I'm just about to record or currently recording in progress. All right. So what are we going to talk about this week, gang? Well, I'm glad you asked. Even if you didn't ask, I'm, I'm still going to say I'm glad you asked because I'm kind of in a weird mood. Why? I'm not sure. So a bit of context. This is episode 204. You're going to be hearing this on Thursday, May the 27th. Currently, it's Wednesday, May the 26th. I'm recording this. See what time it is. It is 6.20 p.m. So not only do I have to record this thing, I also have to edit it, upload it, and uh, get it ready for tomorrow for all of you folks out there in podcast land to listen to. You're going to listen to quite a treat of an episode. Actually, to be honest, I'm kind of tired and my mind has been uh, spinning and I haven't been sleeping very much because of everything that's going on. So this is going to be more of a lighthearted episode. It's not uh, a life lesson kind of show. Nothing uh, too deep. No great spiritual truths unless something accidentally comes out during the recording process. What we're going to talk about I'm going to give you some, uh, I guess, television and movie recommendations. I'm also going to give you a bit of an update on where I'm currently situated with the business idea that I've been talking about for the last couple episodes. But before I do any of that stuff, I have to let you know that last Thursday, I did get my first COVID vaccine shot. I got the Pfizer, um, what's the dosage uh brand mixture uh i don't i don't know it was the pfizer one anyway whatever you want to call it i got my first dose of pfizer the next one september 9th so that'll be round two and apparently round two is going to knock you for quite the loop and uh, i might have to take the day off uh I, oh today um let me see where else did i want to go with this um so yeah my, my arm hurt for about a day and a half uh no bruising nothing like that no adverse side effects wasn't extra sleepy or anything so that's that's good thursday may 27th i was supposed to get a tattoo you if you uh, remember i was supposed to get the tattoo back in january but then we had a lockdown uh and then we rescheduled it for may 27th well may 27th is almost here and of course we're in lockdown again so i i messaged the guy and i haven't heard from him because he's not very communicative and anyway i assume i'll get the tattoo eventually somewhere down the road that is my uh grandparents airplane my my grandfather was a pilot and he had a bunch of planes and the tattoo i want to get is his airplane uh, which he called the betty lou which is my grandmother's name i'm going to put that on my right shoulder it's my memorial arm basically uh, when people pass away that are important to me they get put on my right arm uh, so yeah that's quite the history i don't want to go into that because that's sad and morbid but anyway talking about covid part of the ESO network we're trying to encourage all of you out there in podcast land to get your shot wear your masks and do all the things uh, so I'm just going to play the uh, the COVID vaccine uh, public service announcement right here welcome to Dr. Geek's laboratory hello everyone Dr. Geek here with a shout out to all the scientists who worked tirelessly to bring a COVID-19 vaccine into reality 
And let's face it, creating something of this magnitude is a miracle worthy of Dr. McCoy himself. And now, Dr. Geek needs you to do your part. Remember, each shot is one small step back to normal, one giant leap to putting the pandemic behind us. We can do this. For more information, visit vaccines.gov to find your nearest provider. Okay, so there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, speaking of promos and uh, commercials and stuff, last week I asked all of you out there if you wanted to create a promo for me because I need one by July as part of the ESO Network uh membership i guess you could say we have to put out a promo every six or eight months and uh the next one's coming due and i don't want to do it uh because the last one i put out was really really good not that anybody on the network actually played it very much but uh still there you go soulforgepodcast at gmail.com if you want to email me a completed promo so i don't have to do it ha huh. anyway thanks so what else did i want to talk about oh yes the business updates uh let's see so it turns out I got approved for the mortgage. I got approved at the 5%, which I can, well, I was going to, I was going to say easily afford, but I can manage it. The tenants are going to stay hopefully for at least eight months, which will help pay the bills. And I can use all of that time until next spring to gather supplies, to open up the toy store. Uh, the home inspection is tomorrow. Today, as you're listening to this, if you're listening to it on uh, release day, so there's that. Uh, what else? Mm, I don't think there's too much else to say right now. Uh, just that uh, things are progressing nicely. All the finances seem to be in order. Uh, I could still use several thousands of dollars somehow magically to uh, help relieve the burden of finances and all that kind of good stuff. Worry and bills and, and uh, lawyer fees and whatever. Uh, I'm just putting that out to the universe that uh, that's what I need. So anyway, there you go. Let's talk about some recommendations pop culture wise. And why are we doing that? Well, maybe because I kind of miss uh, doing the Rusted Robot podcast, which I did for seven plus years and uh, haven't done that in a, oh, let's see, about a month and a half. I'm not going to get uh, too deep into it like I would on a regular episode of Rusted Robot, but I am going to give some recommendations of some things that I've recently been watching, and I, I know that it's always uh, a lot of fun when you discover a new show that you might not have heard of, so that's what I'm going to do for all of you right now. What I'm going to do is, uh, I, I wrote down a list here, and some of the shows I'm just going to uh, wing the descriptions of uh, some I've actually looked up on Wikipedia or IMDb. Uh, but first, I'm going to go through the list of cartoons that I've been watching on Netflix. First one here that I have on my list is actually, uh, I think there's six or seven seasons and it's all done. Uh, it's Voltron, the Legendary Defender, and uh, that's based on a 1980s cartoon called Voltron. And what it is, is it's uh, five robotic lions and they come together to form a gigantic robot defending the universe against, who is it? Um, I, it's, it's been a while since I've seen it because... Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been over for about a year or two. So I've seen it all. It was really good. A lot of fun. Uh, it's in an anime style. Well, if you like giant fighting robots uh, in space, it's pretty cool. So I would recommend Voltron to anybody who's into cartoons and space and robots. Uh, the next one is She-Ra and the Princesses of Power. And I believe that's over now, too. Uh, that's a, uh, a He-Man spinoff. There used to be a She-Ra show back in the 80s, and then they reimagined it. It was good. It was fine. I, I never watched the original, and uh, I was just watching this in the mornings before I went to work. Because uh, it's fun to watch cartoons before you go to work. It reminds me of being in grade 5. Castlevania. Now, that is a show that just released its fourth and final season. It's about vampires in uh, the medieval times. It's uh, actually bloody and violent and uh, not meant for kids. And it's apparently based on a video game, which I never played. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. And uh, it's got uh, a lot of vampire lore and demons and, and all kinds of fun things. Uh, then we've got Disenchantment which also kind of takes place in the medieval times, but there's some 
weird technology in other parts of the world and it was created by the people who did the simpsons and futurama so it's kind of that animation style it's it's cute it's fun it's about uh a princess and the kingdom and how she doesn't really fit in and her her dad the king is a moron and there's an elf and there's a little devil cat kind of thing it, it's it's a lot of cute fun uh, and the final one that just released season two is love death and robots i guess uh, season two just came out last week uh, the first season i think had 17 or 18 episodes anywhere from four five minutes to 20 minutes so they were short they were quick uh lots of fun lots of violence lots of weird different animation styles so if you like cartoons there's five very different from each other shows that you might just enjoy oh uh, before i forget i should play a promo for another podcast right here on the eso network Hi, I'm Joe Heath. I'm Tony Heath. And we host the Watchathon of Rassilon. A podcast where we watch every episode of Doctor Who and then talk to you about it. It's like an idiot's guide to Doctor Who. And where are the idiots? The Watchathon of Rassilon, a Doctor Who podcast made by idiots. And a proud member of the ESO Network. And whatever I put in there, I'm sure it's awesome, and I'm sure you're going to go check it out. And uh, yeah, so do that. Uh, we're going to stick with Netflix. Most of the stuff here is from Netflix. Not necessarily all of it, but a lot of it. Uh, we've got Black Mirror, which is an anthology show. It's kind of like Twilight Zone. I don't know if they're still making any more of it. Uh, the seasons are short, anywhere from, I think, three to seven episodes. Uh, it's slightly based in technology of the... F- uh, <sighs> future but not too far out from now like there's no spaceships and stuff like that although there might be one episode with a spaceship i can't remember it's been a while since i've seen it but it's basically how uh technology runs amok so that's a lot of fun uh stranger things uh i think they're releasing season four sometimes this year and uh most people know what stranger things is it's uh basically a group of friends in the 80s and there's telekinetic powers and there's the upside down where the demons live and uh, it's it's really involved and complicated but really super fun and good another one on netflix is lost in space uh they've got two seasons out so far season three the final one is coming out sometime this year netflix hasn't said but basically it's a takeoff on the series from the 60s only there's no cheesy campiness a lot of fun but the the robinson family is always getting into trouble they always need help or or rescuing Uh, they're always coming from behind Uh, so anything that can go wrong obviously does it's that kind of show danger will robinson danger but lots of fun so those are some tv shows that i've watched uh let's see what else i've got here Oh, Lucifer on uh, is on Netflix. It, well, I guess it was on regular TV before. Uh, it's basically uh, Lucifer or the devil lives in, I believe it's Las Vegas, and he's helping out a police officer on her cases. Hilarity ensues. Uh, there's a bunch of demons and other people from, uh, well, angels and demons and uh, interdimensional beings and all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, I got to start season four. I'm way behind in all my pop culture. But Lucifer is great, a lot of fun, and Tom Ellis plays Lucifer. That's a that's a handsome man right there. He's a good actor, uh, very sophisticated and uh, full of debauchery. So that's fun. Uh, another show that I really really liked for a while was Thirteen Reasons Why. That is basically a show. The first season was spectacular. Uh, it's about a girl who kills herself, and she makes I think either twelve or must be, must have been thirteen. Thirteen tapes about the reasons why she killed herself season two and season three were okay and i can't even finish season four so season one was really good Uh, they didn't need to make any more well let's jump from netflix for a moment over to amazon prime and uh, let's just see what i've got here on my list uh we've got the boys two seasons so far it's got uh, Carl Urban. Uh, if you don't know who Carl Urban is, how can I explain him? Uh, he played uh, Dr. McCoy in the Star Trek reboots. He was in Lord of the Rings. He was in that show that only lasted a season called Almost Human. He's been everywhere. 
great actor. Uh, and b- basically, it's a, a superhero show, but all the superheroes are actually bad guys, even though they're pretending to be good guys for publicity and stuff. It's really a complicated show. Uh, lots of fun, though. High-paced, high-action, high-adventure, a lot of blood and gore and destruction. And uh, my favorite part of that was in Season 2 with the exploding whale. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. And if not, you need to go see The Boys Season 2 just for the exploding whale. It's one of the best scenes in a TV show I've seen in years. What else am I watching? Ah, well, I started a couple shows. uh, Well, three. Uh, The Greatest American Hero. And let me just pull up the Wikipedia page on that. The Greatest American Hero is an American comedy drama superhero television series that aired for three seasons from 1981 to 1983 on ABC. Uh, It premiered as a two-hour pilot movie on March 18, 81, and the series follows William Catt as teacher Ralph Hinckley, Robert Culp as FBI agent Bill Maxwell, and Connie Selica as lawyer Pam Davidson. And it says here, the series chronicles Ralph's adventures after a group of aliens gives him a red and black suit that grants him superhuman abilities. Unfortunately for Ralph, who hates wearing the suit, he immediately loses its instruction booklet and thus has to learn how to use its powers by trial and error, often with comical results. And I am, let me think here, probably 11 or 12 episodes in. The effects are very, very 80s for sure. Uh, It's fun though. Uh, It's got uh, definitely campy humor. Uh, You see a lot of scenes where Ralph is flying and it's so obviously in front of a green screen. It's it's almost painful to watch, but it's got, uh, as one of the lesser characters, one of the high school students that Ralph teaches, it's got Michael Pear or Pere, I'm not even sure how you say his name, but he played Eddie from Eddie and the Cruisers, and if you've never seen Eddie and the Cruisers, oh, that's one of my favorite uh, set of movies from the 80s that's not sci-fi. First one came out in 83, and I think the second one came out in 89, and uh, Michael Pear is a great actor. So anyway, that's a great show. I'm really enjoying that. I started watching a couple episodes of UFO, which is created by the Andersons, they are the ones that are responsible for the Thunderbirds uh, marionettes from the 60s, I believe. Paul, my co-host on Cosmic Pizza Podcast, absolutely friggin' loves the Thunderbirds and everything to do with Jerry Anderson. So I started watching UFO uh, just a couple episodes in. It, uh, it was created in the early 70s, and it's uh, very sexist and weird and... Uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to describe. Uh, there, there's people on a moon base, and they all have purple wigs. And I've only seen two episodes, so I'm not really sure what's happening. Uh, and then I watched the first episode of Space 1999, which is considered uh, an unofficial sequel to UFO, also done by the Andersons. i only seen the first episode, and it was painful to watch, and I haven't gone back. But basically, I'd wanted to see it for a long, long time because it's a space show and it's a classic from like 1975. And it's about a a moon base that gets knocked off course. Uh, There's an explosion and the moon gets thrown out of Earth's orbit. And I guess all kinds of adventures ensue because of that. So kind of weird. Uh, I don't know if I'll go back to it, uh, you know, because I, I like to watch all that kind of space show, all the all the classics and, and whatever, and I'm way behind. But uh, out of that group there, Greatest American Hero, The Boys, UFO, and Space 99, uh, I would say The Boys is what you want to watch first, and then The Greatest American Hero, because it's a lot of fun. So uh, I'm going to follow up, or finish up, I guess, with some movies But before I do that, I have an author recommendation for all of you fine folks out there. As you know, I'm an avid reader. I've got totes upon totes of books. I've got a pile of books on the go. I've got a pile of books that I haven't even touched yet that I have to read. So I'm way behind. I'm so far behind in all my pop culture. It's crazy. But anyway, Mitch Elbum. And he is an internationally renowned and best-selling author, journalist, screenwriter, playwright, radio and television broadcaster, and musician. His books have collectively sold more than 40 million copies worldwide, have been published in 49 territories, and in 47... (laughs) 
languages around the world and have been made into Emmy Award winning and critically acclaimed television movies. And that's the little blurb from MitchAlbum.com. Uh, he's probably most famously known for that memoir. I think it's the best-selling memoir ever, Tuesdays with Maury. And I read that and I've pretty much got all of his books. Um, the first one I think I read though was called uh, The First or the, the five people you meet in heaven. And they made a, a cheesy television movie about it. But holy crap, his books, you can read them in like three hours. They're, they're, they're not very big, but the writing is so good. It just flows so well that you can't help but just devour all of his books. Uh, so let's see what, what we've got here. We have a list of books on his website. We do. Uh, let's see. We've got uh, Tuesdays with Maury. Have a Little Faith and Finding Chica in the nonfiction section. I, I just ordered Finding Chica, actually, so I haven't read it yet. This series, we've got Five People You Meet in Heaven, The Next Person You Meet in Heaven, and something called Human Touch. I haven't heard of Human Touch, so I don't know what that is. Other ones, For One More Day, Timekeeper, First Phone Call from Heaven, Magic Strings of Frankie Presto, and The Stranger in the Lifeboat. So, I do have Magic Strings of Frankie Presto over there waiting for me to read. Uh, there's another one there I can't quite see from here. I, I haven't heard of The Stranger in the Lifeboat or Human Touch, so apparently there's more books from Mitch Album that I need to read. Uh, but if you love reading, if you love a quick read, if you love something that flows easily and it has a bit of a uh, philosophical bend, uh, you definitely like the Mitch Album books, and that's album as an a-l-b-o-m not b-u-m so there you go midgealbum.com check him out buy his books they're great and uh i told you this was going to be a light-hearted uh free-flowing episode so i'm just going to finish it up here with uh, some movies that i've recently watched oh you know what i wrote all this stuff down but i'm not sure i mentioned it before i get into the movies uh three other netflix shows that i wanted to talk about are master of none love and flaked Love is an American romantic comedy streaming service created by Judd Apatow, Leslie Arfin, and Paul Rust. Basically, uh, it had three seasons. It's uh, presented as a down-to-earth look at dating, exploring male and female perspectives on romantic relationships through the characters of Mickey and Gus, played by Gillian Jacobs and Paul Rust. Uh, Mickey and Gus are two untrustworthy people, each with significant emo emotional baggage, attempting to build a trusting relationship with each other. Mickey is an alcoholic, a love sex addict, and a pot stirrer, and someone who tends to be dishonest with herself and others, while Gus is awkward, emotionally needy, oblivious to social cues, and prone to occasional outbursts when things don't go his way. That has got, let me see here, it says, season one had 10 episodes, both season two and three had 12 episodes. Season three premiered March 9th, 2018, so it's been over for a while, but it's still on Netflix. It's, uh, it's a little bit awkward to watch sometimes because of the situations these people get themselves in, but so good, so good, and very relatable too in, in certain aspects. So I would recommend Love to anybody. Uh, another one is called Flaked, and that's an American comedy streaming television series starring Will Arnett, who developed it uh, with some other people. And the first season had eight episodes and six episodes in the second season. What it says is, uh, the show is described uh, about a self-help guru named Chip who's struggling to stay a step ahead of his own lies. And like love it's a bit uh uncomfortable to watch at times just because well at least for me and i don't know about any of you out there but when i'm watching a show i become the main character and i can relate so well to all the things that they're going through it doesn't matter if it's a man a woman black white gay straight whatever it is uh i i just become that character when i'm watching the show or reading the book or watching the movie and i don't know i, I guess it's all the uh empathy that I or the empathic nature that I have I don't know anyway uh go watch flaked it's not too long and you'll like it we finally got 
season three of Master of None. That's been a long time coming. I didn't think we were going to get a season three. So what this is, it's an American comedy drama television series uh, released for streaming November 6, 2015, uh, created by Aziz Ansari and Ellen Yang. Uh, first two seasons star Ansari in the lead role of Dev, a 30-year-old actor, and the third season, which just came out last week, stars uh, Lena Waithe in the lead role of Denise, a 37-year-old lesbian novelist mostly following their romantic, professional, and personal experiences. Uh, first season was set in New York. Second season was Italy and New York. And the third season, uh, subtitled Moments of Love, doesn't really say much about it, but it premiered on the, uh, May 23rd, so just the other day. So I have to get watching that, I guess. And uh, a lot of fun, a uh, lot of good scenes. I don't know what season three is going to be like. I'm not sure if uh, Aziz is going to be in it or not. I hope so, but uh, it sounds like it's going to follow this lesbian couple instead, which is just as good. So, uh, I don't know. We'll have to see. If, if you've already watched it all, uh, let me know. Soulforgepodcast at gmail.com. So, now we're going to talk about the movies that uh, I've been watching recently. They're not necessarily the greatest movies in the world, but they're okay. So, I watched recently Happy Death Day and Happy Death Day to You. Kind of cheesy movies, uh, I think. The second one came out in 2019, so they're they're not super, super recent, but they're not old either. And basically, it's another one of those time loop movies where you live the same day over and 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 over again. So, Happy Death Day and Happy Death Day to you. They actually fit into each other very well. I wasn't expecting the second one to be a direct sequel to the first one, but it is, and it was great. Then I recently watched the third film in the franchise, Bill and Ted Face of the Music. And uh, I know it's a sequel almost 30 years in the making. It wasn't that great. Like, it was fine, but I never need to see it again. Uh, and then we've got Jiu-Jitsu, which is a vehicle for Nicolas Cage, kind of. It's got uh, Frank Grillo in it, who kind of looks like uh, John Bernthal. John Bernthal, of course, was Shane in The Walking Dead. He also played the Punisher in the Netflix series The Punisher. But anyway, he's not Frank Grillo. It, what it is, is every six years, an alien comes to Earth when the comet is passing by and there's an interna- interdimensional portal that opens up. And uh, it's kind of like Mortal Kombat, where a certain group of chosen people are meant to fight the alien and if you don't defeat the alien then he's going to kill everybody on the planet so my brother watched it and he said oh this is horrible and i was like oh i didn't know that was out already because when i was doing rusted robot we played the trailer for it and i wanted to see it and it's crap uh, so uh, is it worth watching sure it's always worth watching Nicolas Cage. I freaking love Nicolas Cage, even if he's super cheesy. Uh, and, and the effects were all right, I guess. Um, it, it doesn't bring anything new to the table, but it was fun. It's just some mindless entertainment for a couple hours. Bright Burn from, I believe, 2019. That's basically uh, a Superman origin tale. But what happens is uh, this kid who is found in a crashed spaceship and adopted by this farming family, just like Superman was. But it turns out uh, the kid turns 12 and all hell breaks loose because the spaceship starts uh, controlling him or sending him messages or something. And uh, it turns out he's bad. He's a real bad guy. Death and destruction uh, occur. And I don't know if they're going to make a sequel or not, but um, it's not a heartwarming show. Uh, very violent and uh, a little bit shocking in certain scenes, actually. So, hmm, it was right up my alley. Uh, didn't make me feel good, but there it was. And then the last movie that I wanted to tell you about that I watched this past weekend, uh, Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead. Following a zombie outbreak in Las Vegas, a group of mercenaries take the ultimate gamble, venturing into the quarantine zone to pull off the greatest heist ever attempted. So what happened was, in this movie, uh, I guess there's been a zombie outbreak in Las Vegas for quite a while. They've encircled the city with shipping containers to contain all the zombies, and there's this uh, rich guy, I guess he owns one of the casinos 
in, in Vegas. His name is Tanaka, and he's got a vault with like $200 million in there. And he, he wants Dave Bautista and, to get up a crew and uh, go in there, get the money, and get out. But there's, of course, ulterior motives. And uh, I don't know if you're uh, following the same things that I follow on Facebook, but it's all anybody's talking about is Army of the Dead this, Army of the Dead that. Uh, is there going to be a sequel? Is it going to be a franchise? Uh, why were there robot zombies? Uh, what about the uh, the UFO lights in the background? So there's aliens and robots and all kinds of stuff that's uh, never really in the movie too much, but there's some hinting at it. Uh, and another thing that I didn't realize while watching it, but only after I read an article about it, is... Well, I know Tig Notaro is in it, and she's, of course, a famous comedian, and she plays Jet Reno in uh, Star Trek Discovery. But uh, I guess what happened was she plays the helicopter pilot, but when they originally filmed the thing, uh, the helicopter pilot was uh, a comedian actor named Chris D'Elia, but I guess he had all kinds of sexual allegations about him, so they green-screened Tig Notaro into his role. So I guess she had to act all the parts in front of a green screen without any of the co-stars and she got digitally inserted later. But I didn't know that from watching the thing and I only know because I read an article about it. So if you haven't watched it yet and you plan to, pay attention to Tig Notaro and how she interacts because Dave Bautista said he's in the movie with her, they share scenes together, but they've ever never actually met. So that was kind of a bit of a mind blower. A uh, lot of fun. Um, I really liked it. Uh, it didn't bring anything new to the table. It's full of zombie movie tropes, but it was still fun. It was still a good movie. I hope they make a whole bunch more. And uh, I think I gave it like 8 out of 10 because it was it was that good. So anyway, uh, those, I believe, are everything that I have on my list. Uh, yes, yes it is. So just... Uh, a light-hearted episode this week for you, gang. Talking about some things that uh, I've recently watched. Uh, a book writer, I guess you could call him an author, that I've been uh, reading most of his books and really enjoying. Maybe I'll do an episode like this again in the future. Uh, but for now, I guess we're all done. Uh, I just wanted to give you updates on the COVID, on the business, and uh, bring you an episode this week. Because uh, even though my brain is brain dead, I wanted to give you something fun to listen to. So if you enjoyed that, don't forget to subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Leave a five-star review in the iTunes store or any other podcatcher of your choice. Send emails. Uh, do all the things. Check out soulforgepodcast.com for all the social media links. Take care of yourself and each other. And until next week, remember, beautiful things don't ask for attention. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Soul Forge Podcast. Your support is greatly appreciated, and we hope you'll tune in again next time. Remember that you can visit soulforgepodcast.com for all of our social media links, and don't forget to share the show with everyone you know. The Soul Forge Podcast is your best source for living your best life. Think about it. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping for the Tee Public Store, which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network, your station for all things geek.